You've seen how SwiftUI lets us store changing data in our view structs using the at state property wrapper. How we can bind that state to the value of a UI control using a dollar sign, making a two way binding. And how changing that state automatically causes SwiftUI to re invoke our view bodies, keeping them up to date at all times. And we can buy it together, which means we can write code like this. We could say there's some local state here called blur amount with a value of 0.0. .0. And then the view body, I'm going to say there is a V stack with a text inside saying hello world with a blur attached to it with a radius of our blur amount. And then make a slider bound to that blur amount in the range of 0 through 20. And then we'll add another button here. Uh, saying random blur. This will make the blur amount equal to a random value in the range of zero through 20. Now, if you run this code right now, you will of course see that dragging the slider changes the blur dynamically here. Exactly as you expect. And tapping the button immediately picks a random value, blurs the text correctly and changes the slider. So it's working very nicely. But now let's say we want this binding to do more than just handle the radius of the blur effect. Perhaps we want to run a method. We want to say, uh, you know, do some work here, like print out the value after it's been changed. So you might say, well, this is a property, blur amount. I can watch that being changed with one of Swift's property observers. I can say, did set print the new value is blur amount. So when blur amount changes, automatically tell me what it's changed to. And if you run that code now, you're going to be disappointed. As I drag this slider around, watch down here in my debug log, I drag the slider around, nothing's being printed. It's still blurring correctly, but it's uh, not actually taking the action we asked it to. On the flip side, if I press random blur, it is being printed. So we have an interesting contrast here. One correctly uh, prints values out, one does not, even though they're both having the correct visual effect. Now to understand what's happening here, I want to explore a little bit of how this state thing actually works and what property wrappers are doing for us behind the scenes. Now, property wrappers have that name because they wrap our property inside another type, another struct. And what this means is when we use at state here to wrap a double or a string, whatever, the actual type of the property is a state of string or a state of double. Similarly, when you use at environment and others, uh, we actually have an environment struct behind the scenes that contains some value inside it. That's also a property wrapper. Now, previously I explained uh, we can't modify properties in our view by default because they are structs, they're not able to be changed and therefore they're fixed. However, now you know state is itself a struct. This is a struct called state, a state of a double inside. So we've got a conundrum here. How come we can change this struct, the state struct? Now, Xcode's got a really helpful keyboard command called open quickly, accessed with Shift Command O on your keyboard. This lets you type anything in any types in your, your own project or any of Apple's frameworks you've imported it here. And in this case, I've, 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 if you activate it now and, and type in state, it's going to bring up state that belongs to SwiftUI you'll see that right here. So just find it and select it now, just state now, I press enter. And I'll open that in the preview of what SwiftUI looks like internally here. And you'll be taken to what's called the generated interface file for SwiftUI. Essentially, it's all the parts that SwiftUI exposes to us to use. There's no implementation code here, you can't see the actual internals of SwiftUI here. But there's lots of definitions for protocols, structs, views, modifiers, and more all here. We asked open state. So on this line right here, the state line, this thing here 
is a property wrapper. That makes it a property wrapper here. And then if you look a bit further down, you can see a little bit of what it exposes and you'll find, if I scroll far enough, there we go, this thing here, the wrapped value. It exposes a wrapped value property. That wrapped value is the actual value we're trying to store, a string or a double, whatever. It's this unknown value thing here. You can see it's a state of type value. That's Swift generics again. It's one of those values here. It's a string or int or a double, whatever. And what this generated interface file is telling us is that this property can be read, it's got a getter, and has a setter, but it is a non-mutating setter, meaning that when we set the value, it won't actually change the struct itself. What's happening is behind the scenes, it sends the new value off to SwiftUI for storage in some kind of place where it can be modified freely. So it's true, the struct itself never changes. And now you know all that, let's go back to our previous code here, our problematic code, right? On the surface, this seems to state when the blur amount changes, go ahead and print out its new value. However, because this at state property wrapper actually wraps its contents, what it's actually saying is when the state struct that wraps the blur amount property changes, print out the blur amount. Still with me? <laughs> Let's go a stage further. You've just seen how state wraps its value using a non mutating setter, which means neither blur amount or the state struct wrapping it is changing. Our binding is directly changing the internally stored value, which means the property observer is never being triggered. So, changing the property directly using a button is fine. It goes through the non-mutating setter and therefore triggers the did set observer. But using a binding does not, like we have here. It bypasses the setter and adjust the value directly. So how then can we solve this? How can we ensure that some code like this is being run whenever a binding is changed, no matter how that change happens? Well, there's a modifier just for that purpose.